Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, this good morning from New York, and uh, good uh, evening. Good morning for wherever you are. Uh, I am uh, Dean Asaf. I'm the deputy director uh, here in Doko, and with me is my colleague uh, Sarma Khan. Hello, colleagues. Um, my name is Sarma Khan. I'm here uh, with uh, with Dean Asaf, and we look forward to. Um, taking through this webinar and answering uh, uh, some of your questions. I'm the team leader for leadership development here at DACA. For today's webinar, uh, the purpose of the webinar is to clarify any questions that may be uh, still with you for the 2006 performance appraisal process. Uh, I'll go through a very short presentation just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, and then we'll open it up for Q&A, uh, which is the main purpose of today's webinar, uh, so that we all can hear each other's questions and the answers related to those questions. Uh, with the uh, webinar tool, you'll be able to type in your questions, and we'll be fielding all the questions we can. We've scheduled a two-hour uh, period. Uh, however, uh, if we uh, do not require the full period, of course, for questions, we can end early. Uh, or we'll use up the whole time as is appropriate. Uh, uh, Adama, could you go to the first slide, please? So just to uh, give an, an overview of, uh, of where we are uh, and the overall purpose of this webinar, um, we are talking about the 2016 performance appraisal process. Um, and the uh, 2016 performance appraisal process uh, is a change from what you've done in 2015 and the change is related to the adoption of excuse me just a moment okay sorry for that okay I'll repeat sorry for that echo um, the 2016 process is a slight change from the 2015 process given that it is now using the ARC methodology for the self-assessments that you are now preparing. Uh, as you uh, will recall from what you prepared earlier uh, last year, the UNCT identifies res results around uh, five goal categories and then the RC and UNCT members establish their contribution towards those results. The performance appraisal process uh, for this year is paper-based as the ARC platform, uh, online platform, is yet is still under development. Uh, and the self-assessments uh, will be against the goals and indicators that were identified in 2016. This is due in February, uh, which is not this month, at the end of this month, and are to be completed by the RC, the UNCT as a team, and by UNCT members. Uh, in the past, uh, meaning in 2015 and, uh, and before, there was no self-assessment for the UNCT and UNCT members specifically against leadership results. This is one of the changes uh, that is an improvement to the performance appraisal process, which helps with mutual issues of related around mutual accountability. Uh, the self-assessments that are being prepared by the resident coordinator and the UNCT as a team should be sent to the regional coordination specialists as in the past. Uh, and for UNCT members, uh, you should send your uh, self-assessments to your respective managers for your performance appraisal processes going on this year. If for any UNCT member their performance appraisal has ended for this year, uh, we would hope that they have already included uh, the leadership role they played within the UNCT in their performance assessment and should continue that dialogue with their direct uh, supervisor. Uh, we've also requested a list of the UNCT ARC participants for 2016. Uh, this has two purposes for this year. One is we are looking uh, at creating an online survey to allow for feedback between RC and UNCT members as part of the mutual accountability framework of the ARC. Uh, to be able to do so, we need the names of the participants in the ARC uh, from the UNCT members so that we can send them an email to participate in the survey. Uh, this this uh, list will also establish the base, uh, the user base for the 2017 
uh, ARC online platform so that we can uh, engage on that moving forward. Uh, also, uh, as in past years, uh, the RC and UNCT will receive inputs from agencies across the CEB uh, through the uh, performance appraisal process, as well as from UNDSS and OCHA as appropriate. Uh, these inputs uh, are provided by the agencies uh, for the regional UNDG team to take into consideration when they finalize the uh, performance appraisal. Uh, this is, has not changed from previous years. Next slide. Just as a quick uh, touch base again, uh, just to make sure again we're all on the same page, what is the ARC? Just as a reminder, the ARC is our new performance appraisal tool uh, for RCs and UNCTs that was approved by the UNDG at the end of 2015. Uh, we are now uh, in the implementation phase of making this into an online platform. The ARC uh, assesses strategic results from a performance appraisal point of view and as we uh, just said in the previous slide, the self-assessments are specific to team achievements and individual con contributions towards those team achievements uh, and assesses the results and the RCUNCT leadership uh, demonstrated to achieve that result. Uh, this allows for a full understanding of uh, the roles and responsibilities within the UNCT for, for moving forward the UN's agenda on the ground. The online platform, as I've uh, already indicated, is under development uh, and is planned to be launched for the 2017 performance appraisal process. Next slide. Uh, once we have the ARC platform, uh, and this is just as an update for you, uh, uh, the ARC platform will allow for the res uh, results assessment on leadership areas for, for RCs and UNCTs. When I say UNCTs, I mean both the UNCT as a team as well as uh, for UNCT members. Uh, it, uh, it also has competency assessment uh, and it allows for input uh, uh, into UNCT members' performance assessments, which did not exist before. There will also be a, a, a ability for peer feedback, uh, a midterm review if, if, uh, if, uh, if wanted, uh, and also a, a development plan. So it mimics, of course, uh, any uh, performance appraisal uh, system or platform that you've used in the past. Uh, the difference is, is that uh, uh, it will be uh, designed in a way to allow for mutual accountability for uh, focused results of the UNCT uh, to, be, to be captured within the system. The ARC methodology uh, the ARC methodology requires that the UNCT agree on five goals and indicators in each of these categories. Uh, again, this is a reminder. Development, political, human rights, humanitarian, and security. And right now, as you're doing your self-assessments, your self-assessments will be against those five goal categories. Uh, how did you achieve uh, your contribution towards those goals that were set by the UNCT uh, as an RC, as a UNCT, as a team? How did the team do? and as UNCT members. Uh, so by having agreed on goals uh, and indicators, it'll allow for objective performance feedback uh, uh, on the joint and individual leadership contributions that all have done. Next slide. Who participates in the ARC? We received uh, through the ARC uh, UNDG email uh, several questions around uh, participation in the ARC uh, and who participates. Uh, this is very important uh, because for this to be an effective uh, mechanism and for the leadership uh, of the UN on the ground to be properly assessed, uh, the right people need to be uh, uh, part of the assessment. Uh, what is really important to stress uh, is that the participation in the ARC uh, is dependent on the uh, level of authority that the person has in country for their agency. Uh, this allows for peer feedback uh, and leadership feedback. Uh, the ARC is uh, looking at providing feedback on leadership uh, on the ground, uh, not just with the RC but the UNCT members as well. So as part of the definition, 
is that the person that is being assessed uh, as a UNCT member uh, should have delegated authority, full delegated authority, both on programmatic and financial decision making for their agency and represent the leadership of their agency in country. Uh, only the agency the, uh, itself can make that determination as they know uh, what delegated authority they have or do not have on the ground. Uh, and this is very important also for the UNCT member because to, from, a, from a point of fairness, uh, to the to to the person as a staff member, uh, because you can't be expecting someone to provide leadership and be assessed against their leadership of the UNCT with within the UNCT if they don't have that authority uh, and decision making power from their agency. Uh, so this is where this becomes very important for the UNCT member, uh, so that they can be assessed fairly. Uh, the RC, of course, participates. I don't even have that on the list. That's uh, obvious. Uh, and we've also included here, because there were some questions on that, with regards to UNDP, the, the country director or the deputy resident representative or deputy country director, depending on the title, uh, represents uh, UNDP in the UNCT uh, and is responsible and has delegated authority on UNDP and therefore uh, participates in the ARC. Both resident and non-resident agencies participate in the ARC, and the uh, first bullet point applies to them uh, equally. So for non-resident agencies, more thinking has to be put in place uh, as to who is the correct person who is making decisions on behalf of the agency uh, and is fully engaged in the work that is happening in country. Uh, if there is, uh, uh, isn't, some, isn't full engagement in the goals of the country, then they don't participate in the ARC, and that means they're also not part of the overall leadership of what's actually happening on the ground. Uh, Non-resident agencies will also have the opportunity to provide feedback uh, to the RC through other mechanisms of the ARC if they're not participating uh, at the country level. Uh, also, as with uh, other performance appraisal processes, you need to have had six months in country to be uh, part of the uh, performance appraisal of that year. And again, this is uh, an issue of fairness to the staff member to ensure that they've had enough time to demonstrate their leadership before be giving, being given feedback uh, or assessment uh, on their performance. Also very important, only one staff member per agency participates in the ARC annually, as there can only one be one uh, decision maker uh, uh, that that is part of the UNCT's decision making for each agency. And we also, as, as the Bretton Woods institutions are part of the UNCT definition, we're clarifying here that Bretton Woods institutions, even if they're a member of the UNCT, uh, are not uh, currently part of the ARC, and we'll be exploring that with them in future years uh, if they want to be part of this uh, performance appraisal process. Next slide. Uh, just as a quick update on the 20, 2017 process, even though we're concentrating on 2016, but I'm sure many of you may also be interested in what's happening with the 2017 process. Uh, as I have already indicated, uh, the 2017 process uh, will be uh, used the online platform, but as it, this is not readily available yet, as it's still under development, the goals for the UNCT uh, will need to be developed uh, on, pa as on paper without a system currently. Once the online platform is launched, uh, we'll be able to provide training uh, and then you'll be able to upload your goals and indicators into the new platform. Uh, this, will not, this will be around mid-year sometime. Uh, as it may be differ from country to country. Again, the online platform will allow for peer feedback. It will allow for input. Uh, 
uh, and we're hoping that the online platform will help facilitate the process uh, in the years to come uh, to make uh, the performance appraisal process uh, simple and easy to use uh, for all concerned. I'm going to close the presentation now uh, from my end uh, and open it up for Q&A as I think the uh, various questions we'll receive from you will help to clarify any pending points uh, and we appreciate your, uh, your engagement with us uh, as these clarifications also help us to document in an FAQ uh, for, future, for future users. We'll be uploading this, uh, this webinar on our website as well uh, for anyone to uh, listen to on, uh, uh, separately. Uh, Sarmit and I will alternate uh, questions uh, so that we can facilitate the process and we'll open it up now for questions. Please type in your questions uh, if you have uh, if you have, and we'll answer them as they come in. Um, we have uh, my, my Adama, who's my, our colleague here managing the webinar, is telling me we have a small pool of people who are online. And since it's not many people, uh, we're going to also open the audio uh, so that if you want to ask questions verbally rather than typing, you can do so. So I'll just give uh, Adama a moment to uh, give you that access. Uh, and we, and, and we Uh, if you're uh, not asking a question, it would be good if you put your uh, your computer on mute so that we can then manage manage the questions appropriately. Okay, we're having a few questions coming in. Some, uh, I'm hearing some noise, so if you put mute on your side, that would be most appreciated. Okay, the first question I see is that they're asking whether there will be peer feedback in the 2016 process. Um, there will be... Oh my gosh. Just a moment. Okay. All right. So the question, the first question we have is whether the 2016 process will have peer-to-peer -peer feedback. Uh, yes, it will. We're attempting, and I'm hoping it'll work out. But I need your help uh, because we need the list of participants for that we sent the email for uh, that uh, we should receive from the RC office. Uh, and vetted by the resident coordinator as well. Uh, the list of names will then allow us to establish a survey that allows for peer-to-peer -peer feedback. Uh, so cross fingers, uh, but that is the plan. The next question. Uh, okay, so um, the next question, I'm just answering it at this point. Uh, it says that uh, some UNC team members have finished their agency performance appraisal processes as early as 31 January. And this, of course, will be addressed in future years. But for this year, the question is, uh, are, should they contribute to the process and how do we convince them to participate? Well, the important point here uh, is that, yes, um, it is in their own advantage as staff members to get credit for what they're doing uh, for the UNCT. And if, they, if their process closed uh, in January, then as I said in the presentation, I would have hoped that they would have included uh, their work in the UNCT uh, with their supervisors. Moving forward in the 2016 process, they will be given the opportunity to provide feedback to the resident coordinator as part of that process and will also be receiving feedback from the resident coordinator uh, as well, which will go to their agencies. Now, if their performance appraisals have ended, 
Uh, this feedback can be used in, in one to one uh, feedback with the staff member uh, if, if so required by that manager. So in the end, it's in the, in the interest of all uh, to participate as it is to their, to their own benefit. Uh, in the end, if someone doesn't participate uh, from, as a UNCT member, they, they, they forego the, uh, that opportunity uh, to participate. Sarma, did you want to add something on, on this point? Yes, uh, thank you, Dina. Just uh, on the participation of UNCT members, <clears throat> as, uh, as, as Dina um, defined them to be, participating in the ARC process, this is um, um, a mandatory performance appraisal process um, uh, as outlined in the Management Accountability System of the UN Development System. Uh, so that is an opportunity for UNCT members to receive feedback from the resident coordinator, which should be taken into consideration in respective UNCT members' performance appraisal processes. So that is feedback into the performance appraisal processes for UNCT members. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. okay. So I saw another question related to the participation, but I hope that that's clear enough. Uh, what we've said, if not, please post another question and follow up to the answer that Saramad and I just provided so that we can help clarify uh, on that point. Um, the next question I have is um, how should we treat UNCT members or, or members of the UNCT that have retired? Um, again, it's, it's like any performance appraisal process. And that's the best logic I use for when I'm thinking about uh, different points on this, is this is a performance appraisal process. So for people who have retired, again, they have, it depends on whether they want to engage or not and have this as part of their record or not, whether they want to provide feedback or not, whether they've been uh, in the country at least six months. So just as you, we would deal with any staff member, um, and, and our agency related uh, performance appraisals for someone who has retired, the engagement with that UNCT member would be uh, to, to engage uh, as appropriate given their retirement. Uh, some people who retire uh, just are done and they don't want to deal with any more uh, paperwork and don't care to have on record anything uh, related to that last year of their employment. Um, and others uh, consider it very important. So I think we just have to manage this on a case-by-case -case basis as is appropriate. Uh, um, one of the questions is, will regional supervisors uh, be expected to contact the RC to seek inputs when considering the UNCT individual member self-assessments? The ARC is being designed to help facilitate that whole process. Uh, and so for 2016, we're sort of in a transition year. The survey that we will be conducting uh, with you uh, once we've received uh, the, in the memberships that we've asked for of who's in the ARC, we will be uh, giving the opportunity for the RC to give feedback to UNCT members. That feedback will be compiled uh, and sent to the agencies uh, for them to utilize and performance appraisals for their agencies as appropriate. Now for 2016, for some agencies, as, as some of you have indicated, they've already finished. Uh, and so that feedback may not feed into their 2016 performance appraisal, but will be given to the agency nonetheless. Uh, what's important to stress is that for 2017 onwards, when we have the platform, uh, the timeline will be uh, designed in a way to ensure that agencies receive the feedback from the RC uh, on their performance in the UNCT and to take it into consideration in their performance appraisals. The UNCT members will also be giving feedback to the RC uh, as well as to each other. Uh, all of this will uh, be utilized in the performance appraisals of RCs as well as UNCT members. Uh, and that's the whole purpose of the design of the ARC platform. And also what's making it a little more complicated uh, in actually de developing the system. Um, okay, someone's asking about the deadlines for information uh, from the for, for the 2016 process. 
Uh, let me repeat on that. For the deadlines, tomorrow we want to receive, from, if we haven't received it already, from the uh, resident coordinator of each country uh, the list of participants uh, from the UNCT who are eligible and have participated in the ARC for 2016. So that deadline is tomorrow, which was extended from last week. The other uh, deadline has to do with the self-assessment. So this is the self-assessment of the resident coordinator. The UNCT as a team should also put together a self-assessment of how they uh, saw that they performed as a UNCT against the goals they set and UNCT members as well. So this deadline was set for the end of this month uh, and, and the RC and uh, self-assessment and the self-assessment uh, for the UNCT as a team should be sent to your respective uh, regional coordination specialist as you've done in past years. This is for the resident coordinator. The new thing of course as I've said is the self-assessment of the UNCT. For UNCT members We've also indicated uh, the end of this month, or of course, it, they should also make sure that it matches within their performance cycle if it hasn't closed yet, and provide the feedback to their to their regional uh, director or whomever is their supervisor, uh, so that that they can also get credit for the work that they're doing with the UNCT. Someone's asking about the UNCT, UNCT team's attributes. Uh, the UNCT team attributes are the attributes of the team overall. These are assessed by the, by the team upon itself, on how it views its own uh, performance. So each UNCT member, including the RC, will give a rating uh, to the various UNCT uh, team attributes. Uh, and this will then be compiled in the online platform. Uh, this will allow for, for an, a, a view of the UNCT on how it is doing and will be taken into consideration for the overall assessment of the UNCT by the regional, uh, regional UNDG team. Okay, someone is asking about non-resident agencies, and I'm realizing, Sarman, that I'm, I'm taking all the questions, so I'll answer this one and maybe give you the next, or if there's a few more, um, but, but, but it looks like I, I was on a roll, so sorry about sure. that. Uh, for non-resident agencies, how best to define fully engaged in the UNCT? By level of financial contribution, disbursement in country, these are, these are questions. This is a very good question, uh, and what we're trying to, to indicate here, and this is where a judgment from the non-resident agency itself needs to be taken. Uh, the point here is that if we think about what are we trying to do, what we're trying to do is to put together a performance appraisal process uh, that allows for mutual accountability in the UNCT for the leadership of the UNCT in country, meaning if we're talking about trying to take the UN uh, to the next level and we're saying it's important uh, that UNCT members in addition to the RC uh, be given feedback on how they're doing and also to receive acknowledgement for the work that they're doing in moving the UN forward on the ground, then it's important that we indicate who are these people that are making these decisions and are engaged in actually making that work happen. So for non-resident agencies, as we all know, some non-resident agencies uh, have very light touch in a country. Uh, will be involved here and there on a, maybe a project or two, but are not really uh, engaged with the UNCT uh, in overall strategy thinking for the country, engaged in maybe even the UNDAF, uh, or in other work that the UNCT is trying to move forward whereas some resident agencies are fully engaged. And what do I mean? Uh, fully engaged meaning that even though they're not resident in the country, they uh, participate uh, in various decision making that the UNCT is taking in the country, uh, maybe even come to your UNCT retreat when you have one, uh, and are considered full members by the rest of the team 
uh, just as if uh, they were sitting in country in one form or another. So this is where a judgment call needs to be made by the non-resident agency as to whether they think that it is uh, uh, appropriate for them to receive feedback from the, their UNCT members, uh, colleagues, and from the resident coordinator on how they've engaged and performed in leadership on the ground for that country. Uh, it would be very difficult for them to receive any feedback if they're not engaged. How, it, how would a UNCT member be able to give feedback to them uh, if, they're, if they've never even dealt with them or even seen them or even know what they do in the country? Uh, so this is the premise that I think we need to, to look into. And we also look forward to hearing from you as we move forward this year and next on how to further refine this definition if necessary or if we leave it in this format. And t this year will be a good example for us to learn from, uh, from you and from the non-resident agencies themselves on, uh, on how uh, they were able to define uh, their engagement. But again, I stress the, the importance of the logic of what is being done here, uh, which is to allow for feedback amongst peers uh, on uh, the engagement of each member around the table and how they're leading and supporting the leadership and strategy of the UN's work in country. I hope that that helps clarify. Summer, do you want to take the, the last one the last that we question, have right yeah. now? Unless there's some more questions, if there's more, please uh, please uh, post them. And it's okay if you uh, need us to repeat. I mean, this is why we've uh, we've scheduled this webinar. If you feel that anything that I've said is not uh, absolutely clear to you, please post the question again. And this time, I'll let Sarmad uh, answer, and maybe he'll be able to answer it in a in a clearer way than me. I think you're doing a fine job, Tina. You know. All right, so over. So uh, there's one question here. Um, will we need to provide evidence at some stage in support of the ratings for the UNCT team member attributes? Um, and reading that as going beyond um, selecting a, a, a rating, qualitative, uh, qualitative rating um, against each attribute. Uh, now, the four team attributes um, clear and common goals. Um, uh, transparent, positive, and supportive group dynamics, commitment and accountability, and drive for results, and effective use of team capacities. And um, there is a definition for, for each, each of these attributes that you'll need to keep in mind, or the UNCT will need to keep in mind when they're looking at um, uh, attributing a rating, um, a qualitative rating against uh, each of those attributes. So. One, there's a definition and some some uh, description of what um, what is exactly uh, considered under each of those attributes, um, and then subsequently a rating um, should be provided by the UN country team. Now, on the paper-based um, templates, you'll see at this point you have uh, an op opportunity to provide as a country team a self-rating against each of those UNCT attributes, and then the overall assessment section of the of the paper-based uh, template, uh, you'll see that an indication that this should also include attributes. So this is an opportunity right now in this paper-based format to provide some actual language around how the UNCT feels that they've um, uh, they've contributed to um, uh, to demonstrating those team attributes. Once we get online into the ARC system, uh, there'll be an opportunity uh, not only for an overall assessment, but uh, an opportunity and, and, um, and, and space allocated for the UNCT to, to provide um, uh, some, some background in, in terms of context uh, against those team attributes, uh, if they so wish to do so. And I would just add here that um, the feedback that's given to the UNCT as a team on their attributes. This is to help you as a team. So in any performance assessment that we do for a staff member, and in this case you're doing it for a team as well, you need to have as, as a basis in your own mind what evidence that are you using for the rating that you're given. Because in the end as a UNCT team, regardless of 
whatever rating and, and inputs are received, as a UNCT team, you're going to want to sit together to look through and determine where you are at and how you can further improve. So the more uh, judgment that is put into the assessment, the more value it will have for you as a team. So keep that in mind, of course, as you would do for any performance assessment um, that you would have in your own mind reasons why you've assessed it the way you've done. Uh, but uh, providing substantive uh, evidence currently is not being required, but can be, as Sarma indicated, uh, put in the write-up uh, that, is, that is there. Sarma, why don't you take the next one? Okay, we've got a question here, uh, maybe repetition. What is a mechanism forum for the UNCT members to provide feedback on each other's contributions to the UNCT goal? Does this occur at the country level? Let me see, I'm trying to interpret this question as uh, to understand um, what might be meant by mechanism forum, but I... Maybe this is what survey... The, yeah, I think this is the... So, for the 2016 process, um, as Dina, Dina may have mentioned, or did mention, um, so we'll be doing uh, uh, an online survey as a transition, as we transition from 2016, and before we get into the 2017 um, uh, cycle, uh, that we'll be uh, setting... Um, setting forth a, a, a survey. This is also what the data and information on UNCT members were collecting that will be inputted um, and, and entered into, into that, that survey um, tool. That survey tool. Uh, so that's a mechanism as, as we, um, as more of an interim uh, mechanism. So we can um, have an opportunity, you can have an opportunity, UNCTs, to, to have uh, an, op an opportunity and some semblance of, of providing feedback. Now the the mechanism, uh, 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 let's say, in the ARC itself will, will provide uh, precisely that opportunity for 360 feedback um, online. So this is feedback on the UNCT as an entity, its own feedback on how they've done. Uh, not only in terms of their contributions to achieving those those strategic UNCT goals, but also um, their assessment on their team attributes and the opportunity for the UN resident coordinator to provide uh, feedback on her or his leadership contributions to achieving those UNCT results, as well as a self-assessment on her or his um, uh, demonstration of of leadership competencies to achieve those results. And then individual UNCT members against uh, their leadership contributions, their contributions to achieving those UNCT goals uh, as they've identified, as well as uh, their own team member attributes and competencies towards uh, achieving those goals. So this is um, in effect the, the, you know, the three main tenants of, of, of the ARC system itself. I hope that, um, and yes, it does happen at the country level. Just to, just to clarify, this is a, a peer feedback tool. The, the self-assessments and the, 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 the um, uh, feedback um, on, on achieving these strategic UNCT goals is done at the country level, and it is peer feedback. It is not an assessment. Just want to clarify that. The assessment takes place at the regional level by the regional UNDG teams uh, that evaluate the performance once a year. These uh, inputs and in the ARC and the reports that will be generated by the ARC on the peer feedback and performance of the UNCT as, as an entity, the RC's um, performance, drawing on feedback, as resident coordinator and individual UNCT member feedback that will be provided to the respective uh, uh, line managers, supervisors, um, and thereby regional directors um, as, as appropriate. I hope that clarifies. Okay, that's uh, very good. Um, 
Are there any other questions? I think I'd Maybe I give you a minute or two to type them in. I'm sure yeah. they're coming through, so yeah, we'll wait a minute. We'll wait. Aha. Uh -huh. They're coming. No, I can, oh, there's a few more things. Okay. I just lost the... Uh... Okay, let me take this question. Um, let me read it out. When we planned the goals and indicators for 2016, we included indicators both for UN country team and UNCT members. Do we have to report on both now? The question is, yes, you, you do. However, they're, 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 they're separate reporting. Uh, the templates um, uh, provided uh, do have uh, a section on uh, UNCT reporting back in terms of self-assessment on, on their, um, how, they've, uh, how they see themselves uh, performed uh, in terms of addressing and, and delivering results against the strategic uh, goal categories. Uh, and UNCT members as well that have identified indicators to uh, report back on um, their contribution to, to those, um, to those um, uh, specific UNCT goals as relevant and those contributions are provided to, to their, their line managers and supervisors. And as Dina said and, and one question earlier did, um, did, did, did raise the, the, the issue of what if performance appraisals had been completed for, UNCT. for, for those respective UNCT members uh, for any given agency. Um, if that is done then um, uh, naturally we, there's, there's nothing that to be done about that, but we do hope that those inputs uh, do provide an opportunity for conversation uh, around contributions. Just to connect to this, it's important to, to understand that the, the action points on mutual accountability for implementation of the management accountability system uh, do, do stress and emphasize that UNCT members uh, contribution uh, to UN system results at the country level should be taken up uh, as part of that individual's contribution um, and individual's performance appraisal process within their respective agency. Uh, this is not only uh, an opportunity for, for those uh, UNCT members because we all recognize that representatives at the country level do have a job uh, and, and to deliver within the respective mandates of their organization. Contributions to UN system work is not only critical but also should be recognized not only in the performance appraisal of that individual uh, within their own respective agencies but also uh, re uh, reflected in the job descriptions of UNCT members um, um, that um, uh, UNCT field reps. So this is also um, uh, not only mandatory, it's also the imperative is very clear by the UNDG that this needs to this needs to take place. So I hope that clarifies that question. All right, why don't I take the next one, Sarma, just to give you a breath, and you can take the one after maybe, uh, or whatever. I can take the next couple, whichever. But anyway, a um, couple more questions in here. Uh, uh, asking about saying that in the 2017 online process, individ individual members will provide feedback for their UNCT colleagues on their contribution. In that case, should this be done in the 2016 process through a meeting, or is this mand not mandatory in this year? Um, as I as as we've been indicating. For 2016, we recognize this is going to be uh, slightly different than what will happen in 17, which will have a platform. So for 16 to help us move forward in this uh, 
and get familiar with the uh, process, we are planning for 16 to send out a survey. And the survey will allow for the feedback to UNCT members uh, by the RC and the UNCT members uh, to the RC. Uh, uh, we won't be able to have in the survey uh, feedback UNCT members to each other uh, through this survey uh, because it gets a little too complicated. Uh, but we will have it in 2017. So to answer your question maybe in two phases, one, yes, a survey will be sent for uh, some feedback uh, between the RC and the UNCT members, uh, between each other. However, uh, having a meeting uh, and I think this is maybe even a good practice. And if your office ends up doing that, uh, please do share. Um, in the end, we're all looking to see how to improve as individuals and as professionals. And uh, a meeting, uh, this is not mandatory on our side from a policy point of view, but it sounds like a very good suggestion if you think that having a meeting together uh, to support one another and how you can perform better as a, as a country team, uh, that would be highly encouraged. Uh, but it is, but it is not mandatory uh, from from a policy point of view. Uh, I hope that clarifies. So for 2016, we'll be sending an online survey uh, to RC and uh, UNCT members who participated in the ARC for 2016. Uh, and for 2017, this will be through the platform. Okay, one more question. Uh, go down. Let me see what it is. Just a moment. Next question is, do UNCT members need to report on all goals or only those that are related to their area of work? That is an excellent question, and thank you for asking that question. Uh, and my answer would be that they report on the areas of work that they've done against which goals they've participated. It wouldn't be possible, actually, for them to report against goals which they have not participated. Uh, so for UNCT members, uh, they will provide a self-assessment and provide indicators in the planning process, and then a self-assessment against the goals where they have been actively engaged. Uh, for the resident coordinator, they are, it is mandatory that they report against all five uh, goals because the resident coordinator has that leadership responsibility across all, whereas for SEM, uh, as well as the UNCT as a group, whereas the UNCT individual members may be participating in only a few of those goals depending on their agency uh, mandate. So this again is at the discretion of the UNCT member with input and support from the resident coordinator if needed. Uh, so we will make sure that this is even further clarified or documented in the guidance when we send out the 2017. But thank you for that question. We'll give another moment in case there's any follow-up questions. Okay, one more question. Okay, so the question is, is there a separate form for RC performance assessment or is it the same as for the UNCT? If you open the template that we've sent, uh, you'll notice uh, that there are three templates provided, one for the resident coordinator, one for the UNCT as an entity, and one for the UNCT member. Uh, if, you, if you look at them, you'll notice they're pretty much the same. They look the same. Uh, there's very slight variations only because the uh, uh, competencies for the UNCT are called attributes. So, but, but in answer to your question and to simplify from a template point of view, we provided three separate templates. So please use the templates that are there um, and if you have any questions on these templates, you can send us a separate email or if you have a further question on that now, you can send that right now. Sarma, does that answer that question? Yeah, it does. Just to say that the templates have been shared with resident coordinators. We're hoping you do have them. <laughs> uh, and if you, you do not, then, then let us know and we'll send them bilaterally directly to you. Just send us a message on uh, oh. at ARC. No, not at. Send us a message to ARC at UNDG.org.
Uh, there's a question on if there's any word limit uh, on the assessment of results. Now, this is, of course, a very good judgment. It needs judgment call. I would, I would put to you uh, that uh, we don't have, of course, it's a Word document that you've received, so there's no way for us to limit the actual words other than to say so. Uh, and what we would say to you is to, re to think very carefully uh, on the amount of text that is provided to ensure that it is actually uh, able to be digested and understood fully by the regional UNDG that's providing the assessment. So if it's way too long, too wordy, not well structured, not easy to read, that will not support or help uh, the performance appraisal process. The same would apply, I would say, to uh, any performance appraisal uh, process. So at this point in time, we haven't identified a specific word limit. In the uh, online platform, we will be putting some form of a limit, uh, but we ask that you, you keep it as succinct and to the point as possible. Sarmad, would you want to add to that anything? No. Okay. So. Okay, we'll wait a few minutes in case there's anything else, and um, and do do appreciate your support uh, uh, through this uh, uh, transition process. It looks like we're coming to an end in the questions, but we're going to wait a few minutes in case something else may come up. Uh, and before we end end the uh, webinar. All right. Um, as I've indicated, we've also recorded this webinar in case you need to revisit it uh, at any time or to share with your UNCT members who may not have, uh, uh, or the resident coordinator if they're not uh, part of this actual webinar. So you can send them to our uh, website uh, and under the ARC uh, page there you'll find this webinar posted later today, uh, which anyone then can listen to. And as uh, Sarmad also indicated, we have the email arc at undg.org to help facilitate any questions that may come up as we go forward. I'll also just say, at the, uh, as we, it looks like we're winding down at this time, uh, is that this is a performance management uh, system that we're talking about. Uh, each of us has done performance management, uh, uh, performance assessments for ourselves as staff members. Uh, uh, in many uh, different uh, 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 parts of our career uh, and so the concepts that prevail for performance assessments also are here. I'm going to just um, uh, summarize some of the key points that we raised at the beginning of the meeting which was that the performance assessment that is now being adopted for RCs and UNCTs allows for mutual accountability of leadership on the ground. It also allows for the not just the resident coordinator to receive uh, feedback on their performance uh, as a resident coordinator, uh, but also uh, that of the UNCT as an entity so that we can see how the performance of the UNCT is doing as a team. Uh, and receive feedback from the UNCT members on that and they receive feedback from the regional UNDG team on their overall performance. What will be new this year as well, which I did not mention actually at the beginning, uh, is that the UNCT as a team, as an entity as Sarmad put it, 
uh, will be receiving a rating. This is going to be new. We've never had a rating for the UNCT before. So this will be new this year where the UNCT will receive a rating and specific uh, feedback which they did get before. Uh, hopefully uh, through the ARC system we will be able to have more targeted and focused results based on the actual goals that were set by the UNCT. Uh, in addition, of course, that UNCT members uh, will now be held more accountable for their role in the leadership of, uh, and their leadership role in the UNCT and will also be able to get the full acknowledgement that they deserve from their agencies for that important work that they're doing. Um, Sarmad, is there anything else you'd like to add as, as an ending? And I think we're not getting any more questions at this time, so we'll just be wrapping up, and I'll hand it over to you. No, thanks, Dean. I, I think you did a good. Uh, I, you've done a good summary on on the key, um, on the on the critical points and key key information um, uh, that you think addressed and, and covers many of the questions asked. Um, just to just to reiterate that this is. Um, again, not just a, a, a performance appraisal process. This is the UNDG. This is one key instrument and tool um, that is going to not only not only effectively track leadership results at the country level in terms of accountability, uh, but this is uh, a tool that is um, going to be closely looked at that does gauge the collective leadership imperative of the UN system on the ground. Um, so we do want you to to um, to, to keep that in mind. Uh, we've been saying this um, and 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 reiterating this not only within the mechanisms here at, at, in New York at headquarters of the UNDG um, at, with our regional colleagues, uh, but as well as with with resident coordinators and and, and UNCT members in RC offices. Um, so this is um, you know uh, you know we're really navigating. Um, uh, uh, a, a sharp turn in the right direction on accountability on the ground. Um, and it's not accountability for the sake of accountability, it's the accountability uh, for the sake of ensuring that the contributions of the UN system um, are, are, are captured, recognized um, uh, by the system itself uh, and, and an effective way to, to, to gauge um, many of these indices uh, around leadership contributions on the ground, so we can um, we can effectively support our season country teams uh, better in terms of their needs, uh, in terms of uh, them being uh, more uh, um, more uh, more equipped uh, uh, with the right um, capabilities to to do this, do this very important job um, uh, that the UNCT uh, collectively uh, deliver on, and resident coordinators' office. Uh, as a nerve center of coordination on the ground, uh, effectively support. So let me just leave it at that, and uh, just say that uh, thank you very much for your engagement uh, and your questions. We hope it's been useful, and uh, we look forward to continue to engage with you um, over the course of this um, uh, this rollout. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.